Sad news for most people, Kaiazo has left the building, he has gone to her to Berlin. It feels weird not seeing him in Crystal Palace colours, although I, I say that, her to Berlin also playing blue, so it kind of is still Crystal Palace colours. But yes, the 24 year old whose name I couldn't say correctly for a year and a half has left for £60 million. Good news for those of you who wanted me to sign a defender, I went out with some of this money and bought a defender. Yeah, mi miracles do happen everyone. Yes folks, how is it going and welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 13. Today we are going to take a look at our youth team and some of the younger prospects at the club. I feel like that's something I've somewhat what neglected uh, over the last year just because there's been so much focus on the first team. Today we are going to look more at the youth of tomorrow, but not before we talk about a couple of signings made since last episode. Uh, Joel Fafana, the first of these players, 21 years old, Ivory Coast International. Um, I needed a little bit more strength at centre-back. I needed a little bit more coverage at right-back. Uh, this man ticks two boxes, I suppose. 21 years old, signed from Barcelona for £36.5 million. Pounds. Um, you might be a tad underwhelmed when you look at him. Um, the honest answer is that I've struggled to find centre-backs. I've struggled to find defenders. I feel like there's certain positions where uh, there's just plentiful players. And unfortunately for us, as a team that are newly promoted that don't have Champions League football, there aren't that many centre-backs of Champions League quality who want to join us. Joel Fafana, a backup at Barca, signed him because of his versatility. I like the look of him. He can jump. Not maybe the best player going forward. I'm trying to get rid of a stays back at all tri at times trait on him just because I feel like that kind of holds him back as a wing-back. We'll see what becomes of it. Um, not a bad addition. Not all that cheap, though, at £36.5 million. One other first team signing made, Aaron Woodward has joined us from Norwich City. I needed a replacement for Kaiazo, someone who could play out on the left hand side and cut in. This is the man I've ended up going with. You can see him compared here with Kaiazo. Um, he's not as good in the air, he's not quite as technical, but he's still a very, very solid player with some very, very good mentals. At 26 years old, he is a tiny bit on the older side, but considering we sold Kaiazo for 60 million to sign an English replacement for 45 million. I feel like he's good business, and whilst he has struggled at Norwich over the last two years since he left Chelsea to join them, I do feel like his two goals in four games show he is getting off to a good start with us. One other first team player signed, I suppose this is a teaser for some of the young players to come up, uh, Michael Kayondo, uh, a Ugandan international. I don't think I've ever had a Ugandan player before, never mind a Ugandan goalkeeper. This man has 14 caps, he's 18 years old, he was playing for Las Palmas in the second division of Spain. I don't know about you guys, I think he's absolutely amazing. He's been developing great already, maybe slightly pay, overpaid at £8 million, but I'm hoping he could be our long-term centre-back option. Already has two and a half stars, current ability, bags of potential, I'm a fan. You might have noticed to sign those three players, I spent about £78 million, so logically, Kaizo leaving for 60 doesn't really cover that. Um, there was one other kind of big, I suppose, headline sale, that was Manu Kone, who has left us to go to Zenit St. Petersburg. They spent £14.5 million on him. He's playing well for them. We get a bit of money for a player who was in the last year of his contract and the wrong side of 30. Everyone's a winner. Just a little FC United update with Kayondo joining us in goal. Mitchell McDonald wasn't needed anymore. The good news is that FC United and Manchester wanted to loan back their former goalkeeper. So Mitchell McDonald playing for FC United. One player who's not playing for FC United uh, is... My, my last gift, shall we say, to FC United, Ross Butterworth, the captain, was leaving the club anyway. He, they accepted a bid of £600,000. I gave them £15 million. Now, I know not everyone's happy that I've been doing this. And I have been, it has been getting a little bit silly, hasn't it? The, the money siphoning off to our former club, the money laundering. As I, I, You know what? If, if there's no episode one day, it's because I was done for an investigation. They, they've taken me down. Um, the feds. Um, but no, we've given FC United some more money. It's 7.5 million up front and then 7.5 million over three years. Right now, they're 20th in the championship. So it's good to know that all the money they've been receiving, all the money that they've been getting, they've been reinvesting well. I really hope they stay up. Otherwise, this is just a testament to how bad the AI is at dealing with money, isn't it, really? 
So since you were last here, plenty of matches played both in the Cup and the League. Today we're taking on Liverpool in the EFL Cup and then we're going to take on Manchester City in the League. Manchester City struggling to start the season. No win in their last five. We also knocked them out of the EFL Cup. You can see here how the, uh, the league table is looking at the early stages. We are currently in seventh, which is actually below what the board expectation is for this year. Um, tiny bit concerning. That said, in general, the results have been very good. Um, you can see, of course, just a little reminder, board expectation qualify for the Europa League. They're satisfied with that. Expectation for the Cups, reach the final of both. So I have got to take things seriously today as we take on Liverpool. Um, just to look at the matches since you asked here, of course, we left things last episode having beaten Leeds United. We did play against Liverpool at Anfield. Um, it was Liverpool at Anfield. They're quite good. We got a late consolation they were the better team. They took the chances that came their way. In the end, first defeat the season, two games in. Not, not matching last season's unbeaten run, sadly. From there, though, we did beat Charlton in the EFL Cup before succumbing to a defeat against Newcastle United. Just as a reminder, Newcastle United in this universe. A media prediction of fourth. Last year, they won the league. Their key man is Donnarumma. He's, he's quite a good goalkeeper and football manager. Um, look, Newcastle are a good side. Um, uh, we scored lots. We conceded more. Um, that was the issue. 3-2 defeat, I guess. Silver lining. Good to see Middleby get on the score sheet. And good to see some green arrows on his profile. He's actually training okay for once. So into the month of September, we went four wins in a row. Really great to see. Wins against Burnley and Wolverhampton Wanderers in the league were always pleasing. In the game against Wolves, um, we did play against Tom Sane, our former man, and he had a goal disallowed for them. Um, if we just take a quick look at Tom Sane at 28, you can see him here. Uh, he's a good player. He's not done anything in nine matches for them. I think we're having the last laugh the £21 million sale. In the EFL Cup, we demolished Manchester City 3-0. They rotated their team. To be fair, we rotated our team as well. Severin and Santiago on the score sheet is always great to see. And then against Norwich City, um, we got another win. 3-1, this one finished. Ascending off helped us on our merry way towards the end. Unfortunately, a defeat against Everton followed to start the month of October. From there, we beat Tottenham 3-0. Tottenham not very good in this save game, much like in real life. I say that, they're on course to finish fourth. I'm sorry, Tottenham fans, it's nothing personal. Most recently, oh my word, wish this had been a live com. Would have been a great live com. 5-5 five, five against Aston Villa. I discussed last episode the idea that I just want to score more than everyone else. That's exactly what happened here, uh, except we didn't score more. They kept scoring and we had to keep responding. In the end, a 90th minute equaliser for Tilio so us get a share of the spoils. Tilio, one of the top performers in this game, and recently went on to get his first cap for Brazil. Um, that is that is why I'm wearing a Brazil shirt today. I do think about my wardrobe, everyone, and I don't have a stylist. So that's a little bit of where we are up to as of now. As I mentioned last episode, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the youth players at the team. Um, obviously, during our time here at Crystal Palace, I've been signing lots of players each transfer window just because there was such a big rebuild needed. And for the sake of videos, I've not always talked about youngsters that came into the team um, just because a lot of them are prospects. It's kind of a, a need-to-know basis. If they turn up and play great, I'll let you know all about them. Players like Matayev, for example, players who I feel like are necessary for you to know about. Equally, there are sometimes players that go under the radar a little bit. So we're going to show them a little bit of appreciation today. Um, obviously, in terms of first-team youth players that you know all about, we know all about players like Severin at 20 years old, the Polish Haaland. Hasn't developed as much as I would like, although he's shown some good progress as of late. You can see here a bit of a mixed bag on his arrows. Technically, he's not improved all that much either. Um, elsewhere, players like Santiago have been regular members of the first team for a little while. What I would say is similar to Severin, He's not been shown a load of development. There are some question marks over his potential. Um, I don't think there's anything worse in Football Manager than when you get your heart really set on a player. You hope they're going to be amazing. And then they just kind of fulfill their potential really early on and there's nothing else that can be done with them. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case with Santiago because I do really like him. He's a super useful squad player. Elsewhere, of course, we've got players like Graham Franklin, a player who played a lot of first-team football last year, yet to play in the Premier League for us this year. Uh, I did reject a bid over the summer of £40 million for him from Wolverhampton Wanderers in the Championship, which was a little bit bizarre. But at 19 years old, he is a hot English prospect. I want to see him develop. I want to see him flourish. Worth noting that a fair few of these youngsters are going to get game time today. Of course, we've talked about Kayondo, who we signed from Spain, the new goalkeeper. Kind of second choice, really, although he is going to get game time today. One player who I've yet to talk about who is going to play today in our cup game 
is Nicolas Lozano. This guy, Spanish, I'm calling him the next Gura Jagger. Um, he's 18 years old. He plays out on the right, although we're training him to play out on the left. We signed him from Real Madrid for 1.3 million. He was listed as Real Madrid's hot prospect. Um, in Spain, release clauses are mandatory. So if you're ever looking for cheap young players, just look through all the Spanish players. Go to their club profile screen and look at their hot prospects. Very often, these players will actually end up being quite good uh, in fact, I'm going to scout this guy, I Aitor, because he looks more than reasonable. But Lozano was one such player, and I really, really like the look of him. Um, if we just compare him with Severin, he's about 18 months younger, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, no, he's even younger than that. He's he, what, he, he's way younger. I don't know what I'm talking about. He's like two years younger. You can see the head-to-head com head comparison here. He's not a million miles away from Severin. Highly uh, kind of rated by the media. He's been training really well. He's been developing well. Um, his determination has dropped recently because I've got him in a mentoring group to help him uh, with his professionalism just to try and get some of his other aspects better, of course. Mentoring is something I use quite a lot. Lozano is being mentored by Gorajaga, who, of course, is a model professional. Um, I feel like I'm really trying to turn him into the next Gorajaga as much as anything. He's a similar player in many ways, similar mould. Interesting, I suppose, to see how those two get on together. But yeah, with Gorajaga being a model professional, trying to give Lozano the best chances possible to really develop. Because for me, I think he might be the best youth player we have at the club. Five-star potential, and that is, you know, significantly higher than a lot of other players in the team with some good current ability. He's co he's coming from Real Madrid. He must be good, right? Surely. Eh, maybe that's flawed logic. Now, our current hot prospect of the club, if you believe our club profile screen, is Taya Agayi, who, of course, is the German under-21 centre-back who I talked about just last episode. Um, we signed him for £12 million this summer from Hanover. Just as a little bit of a reminder, in England, you are limited to the number of under-21 players from abroad you can sign. So whilst we were in the championship, I tried to bring in as many players as possible. Um, I really, really like this guy to the point where... I'm tempted to sneak him into the first team for a game or two this year. If we just compare him with Franklin, um, I think it's fair to say he's a little bit better than Franklin. He's only 18 years old as well. He's absolutely amazing. I mean, if we compare him with Tilio here, he's in the same ballpark. The more I'm looking at it, the more I'm realising it makes no sense that he's not in the first team. Uh, you know what? I, I'm go we'll, do we'll do it live. We'll promote him to the first team. I will make him available for the under-23s just so he's getting minutes, but I want him to be a player that I keep an eye on. Kind of surprised his current ability in terms of star ratings is so low. That is a bit of a red herring, really. He is way, way better than that. Um, yeah, hopefully he can develop. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there's more players in the under-23s I should be paying more attention to. Our first team is already a little bit bloated, so I don't want to promote everyone. But you can see here, just looking at the under twenty three sorted by potential, plenty of players here. Of course, Lozano, we've just talked about, similar to Taya, um, training with the first team but made available for the under 23s but other players worth being aware of first and foremost we have a few greek players in our team we've got sasha derliman 18 years old signed from bayern munich for 8.5 million this summer not a small fee paid by any means but you can see here as a deep line playmaker on defend he's near perfect for the role with amazing consistency um, still early days in terms of trying to work out how his development's going. He's only been here a couple of months, but I like the look of him a lot. Right now, as you can see, he's considered the 13th best centre mid in the team. We do have a lot of first team players, which makes competition high. One player who I very, very nearly loaned out this year, but I ultimately decided not to, is Marco Horvat. 19 years old, Croatian youngster. Really, really like the look of him, but he's just not quite good enough for the first team as far as I'm concerned. If we just compare him with Nicolas Lozano, you can see the head-to-head -head comparison here. Horvat just slightly older. I feel like, uh, for me at least, Lozano is more likely to get game time. Uh, I suppose I do also look at the potential that the two players have and think, maybe I should be giving them both game time. In hindsight, maybe I should have loaned him out. But of course, for people who don't know why lots of these players aren't loaned out, I want them to get homegrown at club. Um, in the UK, it's a requirement for you to have a certain number of homegrown in-nation players and also homegrown at club players are always useful for Europe. So when you loan out players, it takes away a tight period of time, which they could be using to get homegrown at club, which is essential. It's a bit of an annoying balancing act. And I kind of wish that in real life, um, I guess I'm right into your way for here. Can we have it so if a player's loaned out, they still get homegrown status at the club they're loaned out from? I realise that makes absolutely no sense, UEFA. It would really help me with my save game, though. So if you're doing me a favour, maybe... Maybe I don't think they're listening. 
Elsewhere, a player who was in the first team last year, and you might have caught glimpses of him, is Takis Van Vakeris. Um, he is another Greek international. Greece, by the way, just have loads of really, really good players that I have been kind of scouting um, the, the younger players, trying to get an idea of how good they are. Of course, we've got a couple of them. Um, Takis here is one such player. He is a very good centre-back, 19 years old, signed for 3 million from Olympiakos, made a handful of first-team appearances last year and actually did okay in them. But with the promotion, he's kind of fallen by the wayside somewhat. Either way, at 19 years old, he's a good little player. Right now, we're training him as a ball-playing defender um, with aerial focus. He's been doing okay in training. Should we praise him? Uh, well, he, he, did, he didn't... He, Seven isn't actually that good, is it? Why have I praised him? Elsewhere, we've got a load of other players who are kind of rated around four-star potential. Just to look at some of these, Jake Lawless, perhaps the most exciting of the bunch, 16 years old, Northern Irish, under-21 international, jumped out on my radar because he was capped at under-21 level at the age of 15 last year. We got him on a free transfer from Dungannon. Uh, high hopes for him. Some question marks over some of his hidden stuff, like his consistency doesn't look all that good. He's not particularly good in the air, but he's got good determination. I think he could be a very, very good player for us. He is currently just coming back from an injury, unfortunately. Elsewhere, we've got Claudio Gomez, who is a versatile centre-mid slash centre-back option. Not really sure what his best position is. We signed him from Velez for 3.1 million um, right now, if we just have a look. We're training him as a ball-playing defender. Um, what he lacks, I suppose, in pace, he makes up for an aerial ability. To me, at least, he jumps out on the page as a bit of a centre-back. Even if he's not the tallest, he's got good heading. His jumping reach isn't awful. Unfortunately, he is struggling a little bit on the development front. Elsewhere, we've got players like Cachado, who unfortunately had a massive, massive injury last year, tore his hamstring, was out for two months over the summer. Um, that said, he's still developing. Got a little way to go to join his Peruvian counterpart in De Silva in the first team. But again, we've kind of taken a shotgun approach with a lot of these players. I've tried to just fire out as many pellets as possible. If we get two or three hits, players who I can develop at the first team and then play in the Champions League, it solves all my problems. Joaquim Abispo is another player we signed from Real Madrid for £3 million. He actually joined us last year. Good little centre mid option, 19 years old. Um, hasn't been training all that great. Can I can I criticise his training? I can, apparently, I can't criticise his training because he's been doing okay. Well, that I'll just give you praise. Um, anything to try and get players in the good books. One thing I will say, actually, is when it comes to your youth players... Always praise their training if you've got the option to do it, especially if they're your better young players, because it allows you to get into their favoured personnel and them to get a bit of respect for you. And if they do go on to be a world beater, it's quite nice having world beaters who really look up to you as a manager. It means they're less likely to complain about stuff, they're less likely to force moves. Um, and yeah, just developing a good rapport with players before they reach the first team can make your job a little bit easier, especially when it comes to avoiding handing out new contracts, dealing with unhappiness around playing time and such. I think we'll take a look at one last player, and that man is Mads Bakke, who absolutely hates me right now, because I told him he'd play on the left attacking mid position as a winger. That was a lie. Um, look, he's 18 years old. I thought he had a bit of Haaland about him, and I'm not just saying that because he's Norwegian. He is a big, beefy physical forward, um, left-footed as well. Great work, great technicals, maybe have some question marks over them. He's not a happy bunny. He wants to leave the club. He's got two years left on his deal. Uh, I would like to keep him around. I'd like to try and develop him, but question marks over his potential. He might be the kind of player I look to cash in on in January. Anyway, that's a little bit of an overview of the youth team setup. I appreciate a little bit of detail there, but I know some of you love looking just at regens, looking at good wonder kids. Um, as I said, we've kind of taken a shotgun approach. The better players are already in the first team. You're already aware of them. But sometimes it's nice just to look at the conveyor belt of talent and be aware of what might be coming through. And well, we're going to get a chance to see what our team's looking like in this game here. We're taking on Liverpool at home. I am playing a rotated team for this game simply because the fixture congestion has been mad. And whilst the board expectation is to reach the final, if we get knocked out here, it's probably not going to be the end of the world. I've realised we've promoted Tyre. Oh, actually, I can't play Tyre. Also, a few of the players available for the under-23s are tired. Oh, I've really balls this up, haven't I? So I was planning on playing a more rotated team, but I didn't realise that there was an under-23s game that clashed with this match. So a load of the youth players who I was going to give massive first-team opportunities to aren't fit for today's game. The good news is that does mean our starting 11 is a little bit stronger today. Gorajaga and Ulrich are coming in. Um, elsewhere, Tilio in at centre-back. But still, debut for Kayando at the back. Uh, Fafana at right-back is going to make his live commentary debut 
We'll see how he gets on in the wing-back area. Omar Richards and Omar Bamidele come in for a bit of experience in the midfield. The two new backup English centre mids in Toby Newton and also Abu Bakari join us in the centre of the midfield for today's game. Two very good players in their own right. Woodward, another English player, of course, signed from Norwich. Two goals in his first four games for us. I'm hoping he's going to be a little match winner for us. And Severin, the fan club for Severin. I feel like you guys exist. Look, there's a scarf. The fact he has a fan club officially. Um, he is going to play as the false nine up top today. Okay, first highlight of the game. Throwing on the far side, Abubakari, Ulrich, Woodward. Oh my word, how has that not gone in? It was almost an absolute screamer. He's hit the under side of the crossbar and it's bounced back. If you're wondering about Liverpool's team... They've got Erlen Haaland up front. They've got Madueke on the right. I think they've got Teo Hernandez in the team as well. It's a very good Liverpool team that missed out on European football. It means they don't have to rotate their team in a match like this one. I also realise that today we've got Severin, the Polish Haaland, versus actual Erlen Haaland. And, well, Severin's just made, missed a great chance. Can't help but feel like Erlen might have scored that one. Liverpool looking to hit us on the break from a corner. Don't let Trent Alexander-Arnold do me. Thank, thank you. Turns out you just have to ask the game nicely. They've also got Declan Rice in their midfield. I mean, we're rotating our team a little bit. Liverpool are not. Liverpool are taking all their cup games seriously. I suppose that's the benefit that they've got where they have a squad that is kind of the size of a European squad that would be playing Champions League football ordinarily. But this year, just gone, they struggled massively. And as a result, they are... They, they've not got as many games to play, so they don't have to rotate as much. Uh, maybe they maybe they should have rotated, though. Aaron Woodward, welcome to the first team. Gura Jack with a lovely assist. He wasn't meant to start today's game, the star right attack in mid. Perhaps just showing us right there why we pay him the big bucks. Severin dropping in as the uh, the false nine. Fafana winning the ball really high up the pitch at right back, too. Great to see. And that was on a plate for Woodward. Gives us the lead against Liverpool. I don't, I don't want to pick it up too much. It's their full-strength team. We're beating them. Alexander-Arnold over the corner here, of course. Kayondo in goal for us. The Ugandan goalkeeper making his debut for the club and his debut in a live commentary. Lots of pressure on him. We'll see how he gets on. And uh, he's, he's not as tall as he thinks he is. The ball goes over his head. It falls to Lugo at the back post. And it's 1-1. That, that lead didn't last very long, did it? Severin couldn't get there ahead of Declan Rice. And then... It's Trent Alexander-Arnold whipping the ball in from the byline. We're over 10 years into the future and Liverpool still have the same game plan. I don't know if I love it or hate it. To Leo with the ball at the back. Looking to build out from the goal kick here. To Leo, Ulrich, Abu Bakari. I don't know if I like this kind of dicking around with the ball at the back. Pardon my French. I know, I really do have a way with words. But it is dicking around with the ball, let's be honest. We're just messing around with it at the back. Against Liverpool's press, that could be problems. And so could this. Madueke's through. He's hit the post. It falls to Fafana, who gives it back to, well, Kayondo. We get it away from danger. 1-1 at the break. We started the game really well. Liverpool definitely stepped it up a gear as the, sec as the half went on. And we got into the second half of it. Early highlight. 32 seconds into the half. Abu Bakari. Omar Richards, back post, Severin is there. Severin is squeezing it in. He's better than Haaland. He's better than Haaland. What a start to the second half. Really, really tidy finish there into the bottom corner. Richards with the throw in. Abu Bakari playing as that roaming playmaker for us. Lays it back to Richards. He floats it to the back post. The experienced wing back, formerly of Manchester United in this universe. Maybe getting one over on his old rivals. Okay, so making a couple of changes, bringing Santiago into the midfield. I'm actually going to play him as the Mazzala because he's better at that role. Elsewhere, Lozano coming in on the right-hand side. Woodward is going to make way. Despite scoring that goal for us, um, I just want to rotate things around a little bit here and give Lozano some game time. I'm kind of using the EFL Cup as a chance just to try and develop some players, give them game time. We'll see what Lozano can do on his live commentary debut as immediately Liverpool have a chance here. Neto to Teo. Back to Nianzu. Pressure building. Erlen Haaland with his back to goal. That is something that scares me. But Tilio puts in a strong tackle. He might need to put in another tackle here. Liverpool playing so narrow. So many players in the middle. Kayondo with a save from range. He turns it around the post. Goal kick taken short. Omobamidele with it. Ulrich. Fafana. I'd love to see a sexy passing move here. And we're, we're getting some sexy passing. Is there going to be end product? No, Santi Santiago's not quick enough to get on the end of that one, unfortunately. But Fafana wins his header. It's with Lozano, the kid, with Santiago, the sub as well. They're linking up nicely. 
We go all the way back to Kayondo. We're dominating the ball. We look confidence. There's a swagger. Look at this passing play. Oh my word. Lozano plays in Gurajaga. He's through. A chance for Lozano to get an assist on his debut goes a beg in. Gurajaga one on one with the goalkeeper. I would have backed him to score that ordinarily. Unfortunately, he didn't score it. And unfortunately for us, Liverpool are going to deal with the resulting corner. Still 15 minutes left in this game. Still plenty of time for a goal to happen. Divive with the ball. Playing it forward. Madueke on the far side. Ball being played forward by Liverpool. A chance, I thought, for us to maybe still possession away and get the ball forward. Unfortunately for us, Haaland in possession in the wide area. Cut it inside. Pulls it back to Neto. Kayondo makes an incredible save. No one's there to help him. No one is there to bail him out. Alonso is going to score it and make it 2-2. And, I mean, Haaland's run was sensational. The initial save by Kayondo was really, really nice as well. The 18-year-old showing that he is actually a capable goalkeeper. Unfortunately, he did parry it straight into the path of Alonso to make it 2-2. Last sub of the game made, I've brought in Mariba for Ulrich in the midfield. And, uh, well, we've got a, a chance here that we need to deal with. Madueke, Haaland hits it on the volley. I think Kayondo saved that. He did. He's gone out for a corner. Oh, my word. I'll tell you what, Kayondo has made some crazy stops in this game. If you had any question marks over him after the first goal conceded from that cross, maybe put them to the back of your mind. He's made up for it. They did nearly score from the corner, but it's all fine. Four minutes left here of the EFL Cup. Haaland with it. Osan now bringing the ball forward. Haaland for Liverpool. Neto. Of course, we lost to Liverpool 3-1 in the league to start the year. We might be about to lose again. Madueke, 86th minute, makes it 3-2. And it turns out a Liverpool side who are very, very good, it has to be said, are very likely going to win this one. I mean, it's unfortunate, isn't it? Neto plays it forward on the switch for Fana. Caught out of position. Keeper is rounded by Madueke. Maybe the decision to rotate the team wasn't the wisest, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do in the time that remains. Richards, get forward. Fafana, get forward. We're going to go to attacking. No more Mr. Nice Guy. No more working the ball into the box. More direct, higher tempo. And as the YouTube comment section taught me, you do get some extra subs in the EFL Cup. So we're going to bring in De Silva at false nine, although I'm actually going to move him to advance forward. And also, Forty is coming in at left-back. He's great going forward. He's awful defensively. Forty, look, do some magic on the left-hand side for us. We need a goal. We need a goal. Five minutes of added time. Is anything going to happen? All those changes made. It's football manager. Nothing happens when you go more attacking, does it? We go out 3-2. What I will say is, Liverpool just crafted out a few really good chances. We create a chance throughout... Maybe, I want to say we lacked a bit of finishing ability, but to be honest, we did actually okay versus our XG. It was an even game. <sighs> just, a, just annoying to concede an 87th minute goal, really. Anyway, we have got to get ahead to the next game. We are taking on Man City in the league in just a couple of days' time. I'm going to be back for that, resting up the players, going in full strength. They've struggled. We're not doing amazing. Hopefully a chance to get a win on the board. Okay, folks, game number two, we're taking on Man City. They're in 11th, we're in 8th, we're on TV. I want to do well on TV if we can. By the way, Leeds United, who we beat oh so convincingly last episode 4-3, of course. They finished in Europe last year. Um, they're currently down in 15th. Suddenly, that win against them doesn't seem all that impressive. A win here could see us climb as high as 5th. That said, it ain't going to be very easy. So going into today's game against Man City, we are pretty much at full strength as far as I'm concerned. Fafana in the team at right back. McIntosh then moved into the middle. McIntosh um, is very, very good. He's not got the best heading, but he is amazing in the air. And whilst he's not amazing defensively, he is very, very agile. What I will say is between Fafana and Marco Antonio McIntosh, we do have a little bit of a dilemma. I don't really know which of them is the better wing back and which is the better centre back. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. On, one, on the one hand, Fafana has the better dribbling and crossing, but he does have stays backs at all times as a, as a, as a trait, which obviously isn't great as a wing back. And additionally, uh, he's not all that quick, at, le at least when compared to McIntosh, who is just a bit of a freak of nature. A centre back with 17 acceleration just shouldn't be legal. Anyway, the rest of the team is as good as it gets. We're going to submit the team for today's game, hoping we can get a win in this one. We kind of need it. 20 minutes in, first highlight of the game. Ball played forward. Fafana going to read it and take it down confidently inside to McIntosh with Tilio. 
Boric with the ball, plays it forward to Middleby, who's never going to win a ball like that in the air. And now Makoko is through. Makoko goes around the goalkeeper and scores. I mean, that was an annoyingly good goal, wasn't it? That was annoyingly good. And for those of you wondering, how good is Makoko in this save game? Um, Here he is. He's quite good. I mean, should we compare him with Middleby? I might regret doing this. Middleby, where are you? Jacob. There is Jacob Middleby versus Makoko. Yeah, Makoko is a little bit better. Man City in possession. Forster on the near side, bursting forward with it. We need to prevent the ball going into the box. We can't do that. We will, though, deal with the resulting cross. It's headed away by 40. Now with Middlesby. Back all the way to Fafana. Mariba. Back to McIntosh. I mean, what I will say is, in all the highlights that I feel like we've had over the last game and a half, we're always passing the ball around nicely. The actual build-up play is really, really nice. I have been quite a fan of the roaming playmaker that we brought in. Links up the play nicely, and well, if we could score here, oh, if only we'd scored there, would have been a, one of the, the great team goals. It was so nice, the build-up. The finish was lacking. Looking at those stats here, very close when it comes to possession, nearly 50-50. We've had all the shots... They had one, send it up in the back of the net. But maybe we can get a response here. 40, bringing it forward. Middleby switches it over to Gurajaga, uses his pace to get in behind. Can he cross it in? He holds it up nicely. He lays it off to Henier, who makes it 1-1. Can we discuss Gurajaga's dribbling there in the match engine? Like, it just looks special. I think he's got 18 or 19 dribbling with a great agility, great balance, and great pace and acceleration. You saw all of it there. Gets down the line, gets to the ball, little intricate touches, lays it inside. Henny is left open. What a response. 1-1. One, one. At the break, all even. Um, I don't know if I should be happy or not with that. I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy. I think if we could get a draw here, that wouldn't necessarily be a terrible result. Of course, with the board expectations this year of Europa League football, we need to finish in the top six, and a draw here would edge us slightly closer to that. Looking at the league table, Newcastle and Liverpool running away with things at the top. It's a little bit closer, the pack behind. I don't think we're going to have a title challenge this year, but we're still in the running for Champions League, maybe. Uh, we we were in the running for Champions League. Uh, Makoko's just scored on the hour mark. <sighs> he is really, really good. I mean, was that too simple? That might have been too simple. Pedro Porro. De Jong, big searching ball over the top. Fafana, Fafana, wake up, Fafana. Wake up. Maybe I should play Macintosh at right back and Fafana in the middle. Fafana's not looked at the races today. What I will say is, Forster, the left winger for Manchester City, is very, very good. It's weird, right? We've been so dominant last year in the championship, and then we've had an okay start, I suppose, this year. I feel like we are getting a little bit of a reminder here that there is still a quite big gap between ourselves and the big Champions League big dogs. Anyway, I'm going to bring in Woodward here. Elsewhere, Gurujaka in danger of a booking, but he's been playing too well to keep him on the pitch. 40, still still not doing very well. Um, we're going to bring in Omar Richards at left back. I have also got one last sub. And you know what? I'm bringing in Abu Bakari at roaming playmaker. Let's get some fresh legs into the team. Man City... I don't think have been the better team here. They've had two shots on target. They've both gone in. We've created a lot, but just a lack of cutting edge and an inability, I suppose, to shut down the clear-cut chances Man City have created has kind of cost us so far in this game. But still, maybe time to turn it around, he says, as Man City continue to relentlessly bring the ball forward in a highlight. They have given it away, though. Mariba, Abubakari, Talio. Talio, I'm wearing a Brazil shirt today because you got a cap. I need you to play better at the back. Oh, my word. What a ball by Woodward. Lovely build-up play. Henia, Woodward, square it, square it. A goal here would be insane. It's such a good goal. We are playing such good football. Oh, my word. It might only be to make it 2-2. That was a thing of perfection. I feel like so many different players touched the ball there. Woodward involved in the build-up play, fresh off the bench. The English winger held it up nicely. Very similar, actually, to the way Gurajaga held it up for just the overload in the middle. And then Abubakari with the goal. Both subs link up to make it 2-2. I'm going from positive to attacking. I'm going to shout to man more. There's a chance. Gurajaga, corner, whipped in. McIntosh can't quite get his header there. And now De Jong bringing it forward for them. There's lots of Man City players on the, the way forward. There's lots of sky blue on my screen. Neto, potentially one-on-one. -on -one. Options in the middle, gives it to Forster. Why did I go on attacking? Why did I go on attacking?
Why? I realise that this game is literally playing out the exact same as the Liverpool game, isn't it? I mean, in the Liverpool game, I didn't change anything tactically and we conceded late on. This time I've decided to go for it. We've, we've also conceded late on. There's five minutes of added time. We're already on attacking. Is there time for anything? 92nd minute. We need a hero. We need a miracle. McIntosh, Gurajaga played into the middle. It's cleared away, but Abubakari there to mop up the pieces to Leo Henier. Abubakari plays in Gurajaga. He takes it down. He tucks it away. It's going to count, I think. Is it going to count? I, I, for some reason, I was scared of the AR intervening. It's 3 3. I'm staying on attacking. I'm not changing anything. I'm not touching it. Hands off the keyboard, Jack. Oh, my word. Abubakari, Gurajaga. Oh. Oh, you know what? You know, I'm calm, everyone. I'm fine. I'm relaxed. It's all good. Three, three. There's another hot. I'm not relaxed. I'm not relaxed. I'm not calm. Oh, my word. I am stressed. De Jong with the ball. Inside to Moreno. Now with Ruben Diaz. De Jong. I mean, imagine if we get a winner. Imagine. Ima imagine the scenes. Forster has been a pain in the arse today. Fafana's not done great at right wing back either, I'll be honest. He's whipped into Makoko. Oh my word, he's volleyed it. Who's that hit? Omar Richards doesn't know what's happened there, but he's just made a heroic block. There is still a corner in front of the gazebos for us to deal with. Neto crosses it in. Moreno heads over. Can we end the game now? I'll take 3 3. I'm sorry, football manager. That uh, it's, it's, it's still going everywhere. There, there, there can't be another highlight, can there? Macintosh, why are we lumping it long? I've got work ball into box and play the ball out defence on. Why are we doing that? So we're just gifting them the ball. Ruben Diaz, ball switched over. Fafana, wake up, Fafana. Crossed in, Makoka. I... Can I end the episode here? Can I just end the episode here? I don't want to play football manager anymore. Am I allowed? I mean, it is... It is my channel. I can thank you for watching Park to Prem today. Football manager's rubbish, isn't it? Football manager. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for more. It's me, Jack, and I'm out. There's a, there's a, there's another highlight. There's a surely not. Surely not. They can't wait. Middleby. I, I've not hit stop recording. I've been given hope by football manager Mariba. Bring it forward, Mariba. He floats it back post. Woodward can't quite get there. Neto, Henia, oh my word, it's just gone over. It's just gone over. I'm glad that we didn't hit the stop record button. But I think that's probably the game gone there. Oh, Henia hits it over. Man City get it away. 4-3. It's, uh, it's uh, a little, little bit of a classic. I mean, they're going to score again now, aren't they? No, they're not. Okay, it's finished. I'm going to go now. I feel sad. The late highlight at the end gave me hope that when there was no hope. Fafana apparently got best performer, which shocks me. I'm going to tell the players I'm proud of them because I'm pathetic and so are they. I don't want to talk to ITV. I don't want to talk to ITV right now. We're down in eighth. Man City up to ninth. Oh, my word. There were, what, four goals in the last what, ten minutes? Why do people play football manager for fun? I've not had fun today. I've not had fun today. Anyway, gang, I am going to wrap things up there. Slightly longer episode today, lots to cover. Just a little bit of a heads up, there might not be a video tomorrow. If that's the case, I am sorry. Um, I've been a little bit behind with videos with it being the bank holiday Easter weekend. As a result, at the moment, I'm recording every video the morning that you see them go up. And unless I can find time to play in a football manager and do two days worth of work at once in terms of recording two videos in a day and playing the bit in between... Um, it's just going to be a perpetual cycle of this. So hopefully there's a video tomorrow, but if there isn't, uh, apologies. Two crazy games today, a little bit of a look at the youth of tomorrow as well. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you potentially tomorrow for more. Until next time, whenever that might be, it is me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.